Too many of my patients tell me that as soon as they get diagnosed with PCOS, they are told that they are going to have infertility. And I have a real problem with that. Number one, PCOS is a lifelong condition with multiple signs and symptoms, and it's not necessarily associated with infertility. Now, irregular ovulation and taking longer to get pregnant, and it, there can be infertility, but it's not necessarily true. And number two, focusing on the fertility aspect of PCOS really ignores how important this is to our overall health and our hormonal system. So too many times people are told, oh, you don't really have to worry about PCOS until you're trying to conceive. And then when you're not really trying to get pregnant, just take birth control pills to mask all the symptoms and troubles that you have with PCOS. But it's just not that simple. So I totally understand. And yes, a lot of my patients have PCOS, but it's not necessarily equated to infertility. And it's much bigger of an issue than just fertility or baby making. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist, author, content creator, educator. I love teaching. And if you have found me here on YouTube, welcome. Subscribe to this channel if you want to learn about all things fertility. I have weekly videos and I would love to see you here. Comment with questions that you have, topics that you want me to cover, because I love teaching. PCOS is a common hormonal condition. It impacts one in 10 reproductive age women. That's 10% of the population. It's the most common cause of irregular ovulation, resulting in irregular and unpredictable menstrual cycles. It is a hormone imbalance in which there are elevated androgens or male hormones that can throw off other communications. The way you diagnose it is you have to have two out of three criteria. These criteria are called the Rotterdam criteria. It's named after a place in the Netherlands called Rotterdam, and it is from a conference in 2003 where 27 PCOS experts got together to decide how to diagnose it. It is so controversial, and some people said you need these things, and other people said you need these things. So in 2003, everybody got together and said, here it is. You have to have two two out of three criteria, the Rotterdam criteria. Number one, irregular and unpredictable menstrual cycles from irregular and unpredictable ovulation. Number two, high levels of androgens. And that can show up either clinically or laboratory-wise. Androgen high levels in a lab can be like testosterone or DHES. And clinically, it can show up as acne or male patterned hair growth that can either be kind of thicker, darker hairs in the chin, mustache, kind of central part of the body, or male pattern baldness. So high levels of testosterone, you can get balding, especially here and kind of here. So extra hair or hirsutism or losing hair in a certain male patterned way. And it's all from high androgens. The third criteria are PCOS appearing ovaries on ultrasound. What does that mean? Well, when you look at ovaries on ultrasound, I often tell my patients they look like chocolate chip cookies and the little follicles, the little collections of fluid on the ovaries, the little black dots or circles or chocolate chips, those are follicles. On average, women can have 10 to 15 antral follicles or resting follicles between both ovaries. If you have more than 12 on each ovary or over 24 total antral follicles, sometimes that can be associated with PCOS. Other PCOS appearing ovaries can be something called pearl necklace appearance where the follicles are all lined up around the surface of the ovary. So it looks like a pearl necklace. And then also just enlarged ovaries that are larger than average size could be PCOS appearing ovaries. Now people are working on this criteria and not everybody who has PCOS has all of these findings. It's associated with high androgen levels. It's associated with insulin resistance, higher risk of diabetes later in life, difficulty losing weight. But some people have no extra hair growth, no acne. Some people don't have a high antral follicle count. Other people are very, very thin. So it's not a black and white diagnosis and it can be kind of confusing. If you want to learn more about PCOS and honestly why I think we should rename it and why the diagnostic criteria should be updated, see my blog post. It's on my website, drlaurashaheen.com under PCOS. A lot of information, a lot of resources in that blog post. I hope it helps. I hope you learned something today because I love Loved educating you. Make sure you like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Subscribe to my channel so you get my weekly videos. If you want to learn more, you can find me at my website, drlaurashaheen.com. Tons of resources. My weekly podcast, Baby or Bust, anywhere you listen to podcasts, Instagram, TikTok. I am here to educate you. And as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.